Let's set up our colors in our design system. So come over here to your theme settings in the bottom left here and click on colors. And there are three types of things you can do with colors. You can import colors, generate a color palette, and test your color palette. So first, let's import our colors. Now, if you've either imported from Figma or connected a design system, that would be over here in this design system, and here's your Figma import, and we have a video link below if you need to do that, you will have already imported your colors. In that case, you wanna simply confirm that you have all the types of colors you need. That is, we've provided labels for common app color types, like background colors, success, error, and warning colors. Colors. And it's easy to forget that you need some of these secondary utility type colors. So you just want to review that you have all the colors you need. But if you haven't imported from Figma or your design system, then you can just modify the colors to match your brand guidelines. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can go into this hex code value right here and just paste in your value and hit return. Or you can come into the color itself and put in whatever color value your brand guidelines specify and then accept it. Also, if you mess up, you have Command Z to undo and Shift Command Z to redo. If you need more colors, you can just come up to this big add color button and add another one right here. And you can specify the name of your color and change the value however you need or delete any colors. Now, we've divided the colors into five different color categories. We've got your brand colors, which are gonna be your main brand colors. Then we've got utility colors, and these are your text and your backgrounds. Then we've got accent colors, semantic colors. That is, these are colors that you're gonna use when you need some UI color for a system state. So let's say when some user action or an API call has been successful or errored out. And then finally, the last category will come in when you add another color, and that'll be custom colors. Now, one thing to note is that this is just to help you organize the color palette in your mind, but these categories don't restrict your designing in any way. You can use any color in any place that accepts a color. So there's no place where you can like only use utility colors. All right, so after you've set up your colors for light mode up here, you wanna come down and set them up for dark mode. And there's three steps. First, you wanna duplicate all your colors. So bring them down what you've set up in here, identically down into your dark mode, except for your utility colors. And that's because in dark mode, these are gonna be the things that are gonna be reversed. And that's the second step. Bring down your utility colors, but reverse them. Now. By default, when you set up a new Flutterflow project, this will happen automatically because the whole idea of light and dark mode is one is on a light background and one is on a dark background. So the text needs to be the opposite color. The third and final step is that you will need to check your other colors, so your brand colors, your accent colors, and your semantic colors, so that they optically look like they're light equivalent. Because normally colors, logos, brand assets are designed on a light background, and all of your colors won't have a lightness value at perfect 50%. So in order for it to look like the same color, you'll need to make slight adjustments. And we'll review how to review color contrast in our last step, testing. But real quickly, so if you come into your primary color here and change the color type to HSL, you can see that we've got a lightness value of 58%. That is, it is 8% closer to pure white than pure black. So when that's up against a light background, it'll have less contrast than against a black background. So it'll look like this. And you would want to change it slightly like this so they look the same, but they're actually not. Okay, so that's importing your brand colors. Now, if you don't have a color palette, Flutterflow provides three ways to generate a color palette. That is right here. You can generate it from a service called Coolers. You can extract it from an image or generate it from an AI. So let's first start out with Coolers. Now, Coolers is a color app that provides tons of color tools. So let's jump over there and see what we got available to us. So to get or explore a palette, the most simplest way is to just press spacebar and it's gonna cycle you through a bunch of color palettes. You can also come into this menu right here and click explore and you can see a lot of the most popular color palettes and sort them according to a bunch of helpful properties. You can also search, so maybe you wanna look for UI. 
colors. And you can select it and it'll load it into the main panel. Okay, great. So let's close that. And once you've got a palette you like, you can come here to export and code. And what you're looking for is this object right here. But you don't want that comma, you just want the actual object itself, which will include the name of the color and the hex value. Okay, so let's copy that. Don't press copy because this will copy all the code here and all we care about is this object. Then let's jump back into Flutterflow and we can just paste that in and import. And these are gonna come in down here here in your custom colors. So if you want to use them for your main brand colors, you would just come in here, grab those values, and then paste them in. And then after you're done, you can just delete them because you don't need duplicate versions of those colors. Okay, the second way to generate a palette is by extracting it from an image. So maybe you have an image that you really like the feeling of it and you want your app to have that same feeling. Well, you can come in here to extract image and grab an image you like. So here, if you want to delete any of them, you can, but let's continue. And then this last step is is mapping. So what you want to do is come in and when you select the color, you can map it to the colors we just extracted from the image. So we've got this color as our primary color and we want our background to be this lighter color and so on. And when you're done, you can just click done. The last way is to come in with generate with AI and you have the full flexibility of AI that we've all come to know and love. So maybe I want a color palette from anthropology. Awesome. And this is pretty cool because it gets the style. A lot of muted tones with a muted primary, which is kind of like the magazine. And the other cool thing is that we have this very powerful interface to test it. So we can come and select a different page. Once again, we don't have another page set up, but you could do that here. You can see all the brand colors. You could refresh that query so you get another variation on these. And you can come over here to this Explore tab where it's giving you a bunch of different type and color variations generated from that query. So this is our current theme. That is the one back here, not the one in here. And then we can see this was the one we are seeing in this screen right here. But then we have a couple of different options. And so it switched out and gave us an, a different body type choice. And you can select this to see it and look through all of the different options. Super cool. And of course, this works with dark and light mode. All right, so I'm gonna choose this one right here and save changes. Okay, so that's importing your palette and generating it. And the last step is testing it. So when we're testing our app, we're gonna test for four things. First is just, does it look good? Do these colors go well together when they're implemented in a design? Second, we're looking for contrast ratios. That is, when colors are stacked on top of each other, is there enough contrast? Are those elements distinguished enough? Third, we're looking for brand consistency with our colors. Specifically, are they consistent across light mode and dark mode? And lastly, we're checking for how our colors work with color blindness. Okay, so the first thing that we need is we need some pages. We need some dummy pages. So let's just come over here and let's just grab a template page. And we're gonna grab this dashboard page right here, name doesn't matter. And let's grab, let's say a product page down here. Great. Now we can go back to our theme settings and into explore project colors. And then let's select our first page we made. And that looks great. Now, of course, this is working like this because this page was set up with the primary color bound here and here and here, etc. And you can, of course, go to the page and make adjustments, and we'll be doing that in a second. So this page looks good. Now let's check it in dark mode. And we can see here we've got a problem. And that is this secondary background on these cards right here doesn't have enough contrast with our primary background right here. So let's come into our secondary background here, and let's just bring it up a little bit. Beautiful. Now we can see that they're actually cards. Now the next thing is we see that the backgrounds of these icons should match this brand color here. So let's just save that change and go in here, go into our dashboard page, select that little card and change this color to our primary color. Beautiful. And the other one, great. And once you feel good about those colors, you can, of course, delete these pages because you're just using them to test your color palette. All right, let's look at one more page. So come back in here, explore project colors, and let's go to this products page. And once again, this bottom sheet down should probably be set to dark. So let's just go in there and make that change. 
come in here and grab this bottom button area and set it to secondary background. But that's not exactly right because the contrast ratio between this and the background is not great. And you've got some options here. You could add a greater drop shadow, maybe a border. You could bump up the fill color here to be lighter, which maybe means that maybe you need to add in additional color in your custom colors. And this is the whole process of testing your colors. Like, maybe you didn't realize you needed this tertiary background color. Okay, so this is great. So our app is looking good. We've tested our contrast ratios. Now, let's check for brand consistency with our colors. And here's a little trick I want to show you. So let's just create a blank page. We're just going to call this brand. Let's switch it to light mode. We're going to get rid of our app bar. We're going to add in two containers here. Let's just expand this first. And we're going to duplicate it. And let's take our column here and expand it. Okay, great. So one of these is going to be our primary light background. The other one is going to be our dark background, which will be our primary text, because remember, those are switched. And then inside each of these, we are going to add in another container. We're going to center it in the middle. So there we go. Let's just make it a circle, give it a little bit more diameter. And let's just take our tertiary color. We're going to copy that and then paste it into this container. Beautiful. Okay, so we're really looking for two things here. One is that we're looking that our brand colors look consistent across dark and light. And second, we want the contrast ratio to be optically the same between the background and the foreground. Well, why does that matter? Well, because that gives your app its distinct feeling. Because if there's a huge contrast ratio, it's going to feel a little bit more punchy, as opposed to if the contrast ratio is smaller, it'll feel more subdued. And so if we come into our tertiary color here, and we check its lightness value, we can see it's at 65. So it's 15% closer to pure white. So you can think about it this way. This color is 15% closer to its background as opposed to this against the dark. So this is a subtler feeling and this is a punchier feeling. And whatever you change will depend on what you primarily designed it for. So if you designed it on a white background, then this contrast ratio should be canonical, should be the standard. So this punchier one you want to subdue. And of course, there are two ways to do that. You could change the background or this color or both. You can move them slightly towards each other. So if we want to move these closer, we can just bring this down a little bit. Great. And so that feels a little bit more subtle. Now, this is an art. Get some feedback. And once it feels good, that's great. Now, sometimes the difference won't be big, big enough that you want to make any serious changes. But if you do want to make the change, once you feel good about that contrast, then just copy this value in here and then go back to your theme settings. And in that dark mode, you would just come here and paste it in. Beautiful. All right. The last testing thing that you should do is check for color blindness. And there's a lot of tools out there, but that cooler service has a great one. So let's jump back over there. So if you come into these sunglasses right here, it's going to give you a bunch of different types of color blindness to simulate. So here is your palette up here, and here is the simulated color palette down here. And you can click through these. Okay, but what are you looking for? The main thing you're looking for is that in the colorblind simulated palette, the contrast ratio, the difference between your colors does not become so close to be indistinguishable. Because you use colors to make distinctions between things in your app. And so if they're no longer able to make that visual distinction, you might want to consider slightly altering your palette to make the contrast work for colorblindness. So for instance, here, you can see that there's quite a bit of contrast between these colors, and these are getting close to each other. Now, these are still different enough to be distinguished, but this is the type of thing that you want to look out for. All right, that's it. You've set up your colors in Flutterflow.